Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about polygenic inheritance. So by now you all know that poly means many. So when one trait is controlled by two or more genes, basically one trait controlled by multiple genes, that is polygenic inheritance. So when we say by controlled by multiple genes, what do we mean? We mean that it is controlled by multiple alleles which are located on different genes. So these kind of genes are often called interallelic genes. Interallelic genes means alleles which are located on different different genes. Like in case of monogenic inheritance, capital T, small t, they are alleles of the same gene. But in this case, we will talk about alleles which are located on different genes. And that's how different genes are controlling one trait. So what happens in polygenic inheritance? Here, dominant genes have cumulative effect with each dominant gene, uh, allele expressing a part of the trait. So it is not that the trait is completely controlled by one dominant gene. So here you will have multiple dominant genes, right? Because multiple genes are controlling that trait. So every dominant gene will give its own contribution and the cumulative effect of all of their contribution will be shown in the Trait. So the trait will be shown only when all the dominant alleles are present. So this type of inheritance is also called quantitative inheritance. I hope you understand why. Because let's say, let's take one uh, example. So let's say that you have three genes A, B and C. So these are three different genes. Now each of these genes would have their allele, maybe A will have two alleles, B will have two alleles, C will again have two alleles, one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Now each of these dominant alleles like capital A, capital B and capital C, when all of these dominant alleles are present, only then a particular trait will be shown. That is, all of these dominant alleles will have some contribution. So all of them will contribute some, some part and the cumulative effect will be seen in the output. So because of this, this type of inheritance is also called quantitative inheritance, quantity. That means the amount or the number. So here, as the number of genes increases, the cumulative effect also increases. So it is all about quantity in this case. And that is why this is called quantitative inheritance. Now, some examples of polygenic inheritance are human intelligence, yield of crop plants, like how the yield increases or decreases, uh, human height, human skin color. So, skin color is one very good example to very easily understand the concept of polygenic inheritance. So, in skin color, you have many different shades of skin color and that is because of this quantitative pattern of inheritance. You talk about the kernel color in wheat. So, this was uh, the primary example of polygenic inheritance because the first time polygenic inheritance was described, it was based on an experiment which was performed with the kernel colors in wheat. So, now let us take the example of human skin color and let's see that how uh, is it uh, a pattern of polygenic inheritance. So whatever you see on the screen right now might look more complex, but as we talk about it, it will become simpler. Okay, so first of all, let's understand why do we have different skin color. So the skin color of human beings is determined by the quantity of a pigment called melanin. So if you have more melanin in your skin, your skin will be more dark. If you have less melanin in your skin, your skin will be less dark. So all of this is controlled by this pigment called melanin. Okay, now let us look at the genetics, how the skin color gets inherited from one generation to the next. So let's say that here you have, so you have two parents here. And let's say that the two parents have two different skin color. So let's say one of them have white skin color and the other one is very dark. So this is very dark and this is very white. So like the two extremes. So why is that so? Because this melanin, the quantity of this melanin is due to three pairs of polygenes. Polygenes means different different genes which are going to uh, control the same trait. So this melanin, the quantity of this melanin is controlled by 
three pairs of polygenes that is A, B and C. So these are the three pairs of polygenes which will control the quantity of melanin and as the quantity of melanin changes the skin color also changes. Now let's say that presence of capital A. So A will have two alleles capital A small a, B will have two alleles capital B small b, C will have two alleles capital C and small c. So presence of capital A means add melanin. Presence of small a means don't add melanin. Similarly, presence of capital B means add melanin. Small b means don't add melanin. Capital C means add melanin and small c means don't add melanin. So whenever you have any of these dominant alleles, capital A, B or C, that means that melanin is getting added. Whenever you have the small a, b, c, that means melanin is not getting added. So th this is what these uh, this is the meaning of the alleles, right? Now let's say that these two individuals get married. So one parent has all small alleles: small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c, right? So all small alleles. That means what? Uh, what is his skin color? So his skin color is totally white. Whereas the other parent has all the dominant alleles. Which means that his skin color is very dark. So his skin color is black. So let's say that the two parents, one of them white, the other one black. So when they reproduce, what happens? When a cross happens between these two, you get something like A, A, B, B, C, C. So basically a mix of capitals and smalls. So in this case, what would be the phenotype of this individual? So this is where the difference arises. So had it been monogenic inheritance, in that case, what would have happened? Since capital A, B and C are dominant over small a, small b, small c, therefore the phenotype of this individual would have been black. Right? The skin color would have been black. That is how monogenic inheritance works. But in this case, that would not be the case. In this case, if you look at the phenotype of this individual, so the phenotype in this case would be an intermediate between white and black. So this individual or the child of these, uh, this couple would neither be white nor black but an intermediate between the two. So basically what happened in F1 generation? So a cross between two pure breeding parents because these are two pure breeding parents, right? You see they are homozygous. So cross between two pure breeding parents doesn't produce dominant trait of one parent. So it didn't produce a black child. Rather, it produced an intermediate trait in the F1 generation. Right? So the F1 generation is an intermediate between the two parents. So what does this mean? It means that all the dominant alleles, they are contributing something like A, B and C. These are the three dominant alleles of three different genes. So all of them are making their own contribution and giving rise to a new skin color altogether because this is this intermediate skin color is a new skin color altogether. Okay, now let's see what happens in the F2 generation. So in order to get F2 generation, what we do, we self-bred the F1 generation. So whatever we have got in the F1 generation, we self-bred it. That is, we cross it with itself. So in this case, what's going to happen? So in this case, you have so many, so many possibilities. So during fertilization, what are the different possibilities that you have? So what are the various possibilities of gametes that will be formed from these intermediates? So you see the possible gametes that will be formed from here is one possible gamete could be small a, small b, small c. Another possible could be capital A, small b, small c. This would be small a, capital B, small c. This could be small a, small b, capital C. This could be capital A, capital B, small c. This could be capital A, small b, capital C. This could be small a, capital B, capital C. And this is capital A, capital B, capital C. So these are the all possible gametes that can be produced from one individual, right? And then there, there is a possibility that the fertilization might happen between any of these two gametes. So that is why we have made this 
chart. So in this chart, we can actually, actually see all the possibilities that might arise. Now, when you look at all the possibilities, what do you, what do you see? What do you understand from these possibilities? So let's look at the first possibility. So this could be one possible child as a result of this cross. So, so how many times this occurs out of all the possibilities? So total possibilities here is 64. So if you count the number of squares that you have here, you have total 64 possibilities. Out of 64 possibilities, how many times do you see this pattern? So this pattern represents small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c, right? So that represents white. So this, its possibility is 1 out of 64 because nowhere else you see this. So the possibility of getting a white child in the F2 generation is 1 out of 64. Right? Similarly, the possibility of getting a completely black child in F2 generation is again 1 out of 64. Then what are the other things which are present in between? So all the other things which are present in between, these are the intermediates. So these are basically the new varieties which have been formed. So the, when we started from the parent generation, you just had one white parent and one black parent. F1 generation, you got intermediate. F2 generation, the possibility of getting a white or a black child is just 1 out of 64. And rest, all of them are intermediates. And in that also, there is a beautiful pattern. So if you see... In this also, as the number of capitals increases in any genotype, if you have more capital A's, B's or C's, so the color becomes more dark because you are adding more melanin. So if you look at it, if, if you look at this particular pattern, so what is its genotype? It would be small a, capital A, small b, small b, small c, small c. So you have more small ABCs and you have only one capital A. So that means this is also towards the lighter side because the small letters, they do not add melanin. Right? So this would be in the category of very light brown. So wherever you have one dark dot, the dark dots represent the dominant alleles, the capital letters, right? So wherever you have only one dark dot, so they all will fall in the category of very light brown. So, where, so just let's tick mark all those, uh, all those children where you have just one dark dot. So you see these are the only possibilities. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 out of 64 would be very light brown. Now let's look at the possibilities where you have two dark dots. That means two capital letters, two dominant alleles out of six alleles. Right. So in that case also the recessive alleles are in majority which will not add melanin. So they will also be towards the lighter side but this would be light brown. So earlier it was very light brown. Now this would be light brown. So let us mark them with this cross. So wherever you have two dark dots. So let's mark them with cross. So this cross. So there also you have a total of six possible, so not six possibilities, in fact you have more possibilities. So here also you have two dark dots, right? So let us cross all of these. So do you see any more where you have two dark dots? So now I think we have covered all of them. So how many crosses have you put? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So their possibility would be 15 out of 64 and they would be light brown in color. Finally, you look at those where you have equal number of dark dots and light dots. That is three dark dots and three light dots. So if, again, if you mark them, they will turn out to be 20 out of 64. So they are basically the intermediates. So the intermediates color, they are, the color is given the name of mulatto. That is, which is exactly intermediate between dark, black and white. So now, if you look at this F2 generation, so in F2 generation, we see that apart from the parental phenotypes, so the parental phenotypes was pure white and pure black. So apart from them, many intermediate phenotypes have been formed. 
So we do not see the formation of these intermediate phenotypes in monogenic inheritance. We see this only in polygenic inheritance. And why do we see this? That is because here you have multiple genes which are contributing to the trait. Like here, if you see each of these genes, capital A, capital B, capital C, small a, small b, small c, all this, all these six alleles, they are contributing to the trait. So whenever you have more number of capital capital A, B's or C's, the color is going to be more dark because all of them are adding melanin. When you have more number of small A, B, C's, the color is going to be more light because the small letters are not adding melanin. They are the recessive alleles. So all the alleles, whether the dominant or the recessive ones, all of them are contributing to the trait and that is why we do see a huge number of intermediate phenotypes. So now when you look at the ratio of phenotypes that you obtain in the F2 generation, so if you look at the ratio in the F2 generation, you see it is 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. So looking at the ratio, is there anything that comes to your mind? So if you see, the ratio is very much symmetrical. So if you plot a graph, on the phenotypes that you obtain in the F2 generation, you would get a graph somewhat like this, where you see it follows the ratio 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. So it is like a symmetric pattern where you have where the peak denotes the maximum the peak denotes that the maximum number of individuals in the F2 generation would have intermediate skin color. So 20 out of 64 of them would have intermediate skin color. Then you would have few individuals on both sides with light brown and dark brown skin color. Then you have even lesser number of individuals with very light brown or very dark brown skin color. And extremely few of them will have pure white and pure black color. So this is a beautiful example of polygenic inheritance where it, it very clearly so shows that polygenic inheritance shows continuous variation. So you see there is a continuous variation. Looking at this graph, this becomes more clear that you started with white and black parents, but the generation in the F2 generation of springs, they do have pure white and pure black but in between pure white and pure black they have a continuous series of intermediate skin colors. So this is this is also the reason why polygenic inheritance is also called quantitative inheritance because all the alleles contribute to the skin color. So looking at the graph polygenic inheritance gives continuous variation. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.